And so today we're going to talk about how the devil tempts us, and more importantly, how to resist that temptation. As we continue our series called Kingdom Come, we've been talking about how God called us to have dominion over the earth. Through us, his authority would be expressed on the earth. And how the devil deceived Adam and Eve and stole the authority God gave them. And now Christ wants to give that authority back to you. And every single day, we're tempted by the devil. He speaks to us. When I say the devil, I mean evil in general. And we make agreements with the devil. In other words, we agree to lies that were ugly, were failures, were fat, where no no one's ever going to love us, we're never going to be successful. And we agree to these lies, and then we say, okay, devil, since you're telling the truth, I will trust you. And then we reject God by that agreement. And we make agreement with the devil, and we make agreement with these lies. We, 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 We assign contracts with the devil to follow his lead. So when he tells you a failure, you say, you're right, and then you say, implicitly, what do you want me to do? How do you want me to live since I'm a failure? How do you want me to live since I'm ugly? How do you want me to live since I'm dumb? And then he tells you, and that's, and that's how you live your life, and he destroys your life. And by the way, he'll let you come to church. He'll let you get a, just get enough, a little bit of enough church to make you think you're okay, and then you go back into your slavery to him. And so we have to understand how to break that agreement and understand the temptation. And what we're going to look at is a very short 13 verses or so where the devil tries to, or he does tempt, but not successfully, Jesus Christ. Verse 5, the devil took him up into a high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the world in a moment of time. And the devil said to him, all this authority I will give to you and their glory. Everyone say glory. For this has been delivered to me, and I will give it to whomever I wish. Um, The devil has authority. Adam and Eve were created to have dominion over the earth. Adam and Eve were deceived by the devil, and they gave authority to the devil. When they made agreement to believe the devil and not the God, they gave authority to the devil. They were kicked out of the Garden of Eden. Now you may say, I don't really believe that story. Okay. Look at it this way. God created you to have dominion over the earth, and God created you to subdue evil. Are you doing it? You're not because you don't have authority. Because Adam and Eve gave it away. Now, Jesus came, died, and rose from the dead, and he regained the authority over sin, over death. And he wants to hand that authority to people who believe in him. The reason I don't do cocaine anymore, which I did for two years and marijuana for eight years, because the authority of Christ came into my life and and set me free from that. God wants to give you that authority. But the devil today is the prince of the power of the air. And if you do not uh, uh, surrender your life to Christ and inherit the authority he has over the devil, the devil will have authority over you. And he will keep you in bondage. So he takes Jesus on a high cliff and he says, Jesus, you know I have authority over the world because I got it from your boy Adam. I'll give this to you. Look what it says. It says, verse 7, therefore, if you worship me, it will it'll all be yours. In other words, if you bow down to me, I will give it to you. First, let me tell you this. First time I came to California, I, we had to fly through Vegas, and we were f- flying into the airport, and I looked down and saw the lights. Vegas is like lights, 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 lights. We, we didn't get a chance to go anywhere. We were in the airport, we got, and we came here. But I remember flying in, seeing all the lights. And then, then we flew to L.A., and it's like, you are now, uh, uh, we are now approaching Los Angeles, the city of angels. I was like, wow, first time. I was 22. Palm trees, hills, all the lights. It was at nighttime, but then the next day it was all sunny, and everyone's trying to get tan, you know, like me, and it would be brown. <laughs> Not because of me, just, you know, I'm brown, you know, just brown. And uh, convertible. And what the devil shows you is all the good stuff. He doesn't show you all the bad stuff. And what the devil will tell you, I can blow you up. You could have money. You could have women. You could have cars. You could have all, look at all these bright lights, all this bling. I can bling your life out. But he's not going to tell you the drama. It's going to tell you the bad stuff. And he says, all this authority has been given to me. All you have to do is worship me. And what the devil will tell you is not only can you take matters into your own hands and satisfy your own natural desires. God says, let God, Jesus says, let God satisfy your desires. The devil will say, if you follow me, I'll bless you. 
I'll give you stuff. And you know what he can. But there's a price. You have to worship him. Now, I doubt that any of you would get on your knees and say, oh, Satan, I worship you. But you do that implicitly when you respond to his promises positively. And when you reject worshiping God. When you come in here in church and you raise your hand, this is why I can't encourage you enough to come early to be in the room before the service starts. So when worship starts, you're in it. You ain't going to get this in the elevator at your office building. They're not playing worship music in the elevator. And they're not playing worship music in your office space. This is where you're going to get it. That you come here and you worship God and you remind your heart who's boss. Because all week long the devil's saying, hey, worship me. And he's never going to say, hey, I'm saying worship me. What he's going to say is, hey, if you do this, I'll give you this. If you look at that and think this, I'll give you pleasure. If you say this, I'll give you a race. If you say this, I'll give you that girl, I'll give you that guy. And, he, and, and you worship him by responding. Worship is a response of respect when whatever you're worshiping is revealed. Something is revealed. And you go, yes, I like that. Yes, I like that. And what the devil will do is he'll promise you all this stuff and say, I'll give you that, I'll give you that, I'll give you that. All you have to do is respond this way. And you go, okay, that's worship. You got to decide, I'm not worshiping anybody but God. How do I worship God? By responding positively to God, by saying this, Lord, in a very simple way, it's not only singing, it's Lord, I am going to do whatever you say. I'm not going to sell out. If you don't want me to have that, I don't need it. You don't want what God doesn't want you to have. How many of you ever dated somebody that in the end you didn't want to date them? <laughs> Raise your hand real high. Now, now, some of you might be saying, right now, homie. <laughs> right now. I'm trying to get out of that right now, so I'm at church. Hoping home, home, home girls going to repent. <laughs> For reals though, raise your hand if you dated someone and you're like, man, how can I get out of this deal? Raise your hand real high, please. Thank you, thank you, thank you. You know what happened was? You were tricked. I'm not saying he or she tricked you. You were tricked by your own feelings, your own perceptions, your own hopes and dreams, your own, the lies that someone put in your head. The devil's going to say, hey, yeah, come here, I'm going to give you this, I'm going to give you this, I'm going to give you this. And then when you get it, you're like, what? Really? <laughs> When I was growing up, really didn't exist. We said something else, but really? I think back to all the reallys in my life, not, and not necessarily dating people, just stuff. Jobs, opportunities, or, or deals. Yeah, I'm going to do that, I'm going to do that. And, and, and boom, a trap. The devil says, I'll give it to you, just worship me. No, Jesus says, get behind me, Satan. Everyone say, get behind me, Satan. Get behind me, Satan. You, know how, you know how you can... Put Satan behind you really quick. It's simple. That's it. He's standing in front of you. Get behind me, Satan. He's like, no, I ain't going anywhere. Okay. Turn around. Next time you're in a conversation and people are gossiping, you know what you should do? Just walk away. For real. Shut your mouth and walk away. Breaks God's heart because you don't know what you're talking about. You just don't. Luke says, get behind me, Satan, for it is written. Everyone say, it is written. Amen. You shall worship the Lord your God and serve him only. The only person, entity that you should worship is God. No person. If you ever get really, really, really disappointed in a person, it's probably because you believe in them too much. You put them way up too high. You should pray for people. Not pray to people. <laughs> you should pray for people, not to people. You pray to God. Pray to God. And then look what he says. Then he brought him and set him on the pinnacle of the temple and said, if you are the son of God. Notice every time Jesus is tempted, he doesn't open up his cloak and show Satan his glory and just toast him. He uses the word of God. Why? Because he is teaching us how to fight the devil. That's why he's doing this. He is showing us how to fight temptation. The word of God. The truth. 
You know how you can't fight it with your perception. You can't fight it with your feelings. You can't fight it with opinion. You can't fight it with political correctness. That is not going to defeat temptation in your life. The word of God, the truth, because the temptation is based on a lie. 